Hello, welcome to the Best Practices Teacher Tips video, Challenging Exceptionally Bright Children in the Pre-K Classroom. After viewing this video, you'll be able to describe the characteristics of exceptionally bright children, describe assessment methods for identifying exceptionally bright children, identify classroom practices for meeting the needs of these students, identify ideas for working with families of exceptionally bright children, and learn more by exploring available resources. Let's begin by exploring some characteristics of exceptionally bright children. Some of these children are easy to spot. They may tell us directly, I already know that, or they may demonstrate through their actions and words that they have knowledge and skills beyond those of most of the other children. For example, when a teacher may read a picture book about a rainy day and ask the class, where does the rain come from? One child shouts out, from evaporation. This is no doubt an exceptionally bright child who not only demonstrates a sophisticated vocabulary, but also shows that she knows about and is able to apply a complex concept, the water cycle, to the context of the picture book story. But spotting the behaviors of exceptionally bright young children is not always so easy. In typical early childhood classrooms, children do not yet participate in traditional academic activities, such as taking notes and solving equations. So it might be hard to see that some children are demonstrating advanced cognitive abilities and skills. Sometimes these skills and abilities are difficult to recognize in children because those who are bored and needing a challenge may misbehave or use materials inappropriately. There are a few specific behaviors and characteristics, however, that seem to be common among many exceptionally bright children. One is a long attention span, at least for the activities and topics that they are passionate about. For example, one day, Simone might spend 45 minutes working along with snap cubes, creating a train that extends from one side of the room to another. The next day, when she's invited by a classmate to build with foam shapes in the block area, she may last for only five minutes before throwing blocks and spinning in circles. This inconsistency is characteristic of an exceptionally bright child whose focus of interest may be so specific that only certain activities will capture her attention. Another indicator that a child is exceptionally bright is a very good memory. He may remember all the ingredients for cornbread after a class baking project. She may be the one who reminds you that when the class visited the farm last fall, the bus driver's name was Dan. An exceptionally bright child may remember words he has heard only once and use those words in casual conversation. Young children with excellent memories and advanced verbal abilities may sound like little professors when they use sophisticated words like evaporation or hypothesis. Exceptionally bright children often demonstrate their cognitive abilities in the ways they make connections between ideas and things that are not, for most children, obviously connected. Consider the child who, when watching her baby brother learn to walk, says, I know why babies wobble when they learn to walk. They're so small they can still feel the earth turning. Though her explanation is incorrect, she's made an abstract and sophisticated connection between some scientific information she learned about the movement of the earth through space and her observation of her brother moving across her family's living room. The enjoyment of very rich and complex pretend play may also be an indicator of exceptional abilities. For example, a child who's able to lead and orchestrate an intricate pretend play scenario, such as the creation of a world in which police officers fight with dragons for magical treats, including invisible ice cream, indicates an exceptional ability for abstract thought as well as advanced language skills. Occasionally, the child's social interactions are the arena where a child's abstract thinking is best demonstrated. 
The child may be strongly empathetic and understanding of other children's emotions. He may display unusually mature gestures of kindness to others because he's able to think abstractly, symbolically walking in someone else's shoes. The child may seem excessively concerned with fairness and justice, demonstrating that he has the cognitive ability to see issues and perspectives that most others do not. Sometimes the children who are easiest to identify as exceptionally bright are those who demonstrate a clear interest and ability in one specific curriculum area such as language, reading, math, or science. Perhaps you've met these students in your classroom. The big talker. These children have advanced language abilities and always have something to say. They are interested in a variety of subjects and will speak at great length about their areas of expertise. Often these students prefer talking with adults rather than their peers, or they may use language creatively, such as making up their own languages. The early reader. These children can often decode text independently and read with some fluency, even before entering kindergarten. Although they can tackle beginning readers like Go Dog Go on their own, they often get bored during story time because the language and plots of the stories read to the class are not complex or challenging enough to hold their attention. The Little Scientist These children are intensely curious about how things work. They prefer taking apart a tricycle rather than riding it. You might find a little scientist crawling on the floor under the bathroom sink because he's trying to figure out how the pipes carry hot and cold water to the faucets. Little scientists are usually keen observers, typically with long and focused attention spans. The puzzle expert. These children have early aptitude for math topics such as geometry. They see the world in shapes, lines, and angles. They can independently put together a hundred-piece puzzle and possibly explain their strategies as they do it. When they play with blocks, they might not want to share because they already have a clear vision of what they are going to build. The GELDs include a domain for approaches to play and learning. As teachers address the standards in the classroom, they'll have opportunities to watch for those students who may demonstrate some of the characteristics of exceptionally bright children. For example, Standard 3 addresses students' attentiveness and persistence, and we know that exceptionally bright children often have long attention spans and very good memories. Standards 4 and 5 both address complex pretend play. If teachers are observant, they may also notice their exceptionally bright children making unusual connections and demonstrating intense social interactions. Think about the children in your current classroom. Are there any you suspect might be exceptionally bright? Some children's talents are more obvious, whereas other children's talents are difficult to identify. To effectively plan an engaging and challenging curriculum, you need more than a guess or a hunch. Individual assessment of a child will give you useful information about how to support learning and help that child develop. There are usually three primary sources of assessment information. Observable behaviors in the classroom, conversations with families, and formal screening and evaluation tools. Let's look at each of these in depth. Researchers at the Karn Center for Gifted Students at the University of Southern Mississippi have identified these cognitive characteristics that pre-K teachers should watch for. Early language development, advanced vocabulary, interest in symbols in the alphabet, intense curiosity, sustained attention, generation of original ideas, excellent memory, creative and imaginative capacity. In addition, teachers should keep an eye out for these social and emotional characteristics. Emotional intensity and sensitivity, 
frustration with their own limitations, concern with truth and fair play, mature sense of humor, and perfectionism. All kinds of observation tools exist, from checklists to elaborate forms. It's often helpful to use a developmental checklist to measure the milestones that the child has already been able to reach. The developmental checklist included in the work sampling system may be useful in assessing children's strengths. You might even want to look at the kindergarten developmental indicators to see how your student is progressing towards those milestones. Anecdotal notes provide another lens for examining an exceptionally bright child's strengths. Be sure to include specific descriptions of a child's actions and behaviors, especially when he uses materials in a novel way. Note the date and amount of time the child spends engaging in the task. Finally, anecdotal notes may also include transcriptions of a child's conversations, questions, and explanations. While we usually think of watching children when we think of observation, an essential component of observation is listening. Here are two strategies to utilize when listening to exceptionally bright children. When you are sure the child has finished talking, restate what the child has said. Summarize and ask follow-up questions. Write down what the child has said word for word so you can refer to it later. Explain to the child what you're doing. You might say, what you're saying is important. I'm writing it down because I want to remember what you said. No assessment would be complete without the family's perspective. The best way to gather information from family members is not at all revolutionary. Ask them. Most families are surprisingly accurate in their ability to identify when their children are advanced compared to other children the same age. In fact, the families with the most accurate understanding of their children's advanced cognitive skills are often the ones who are anxious rather than pleased. They have an awareness that their children are different from other children in a significant way, and they may already be questioning whether a traditional school environment can meet the needs of their children. The input you receive from families may affirm what you already know and observed, or may fill in some gaps in your understanding of the child and give you some insights on how to better engage the child in the life of the classroom or give you ideas to find common interests between this child and other children in the group. If you and the family agree that there is reason to believe the child might be exceptionally bright, the next step may be a formal screening or evaluation. Your pre-K consultant can provide you with more information about making a referral for a formal assessment. There are two reasons for conducting a screening. To gather a very general description of a child's developmental strengths and weaknesses, and to check for indications of developmental delays of disabilities. The screening results may indicate that a child is ahead or behind in one or more areas of development. Explaining this concept of asynchronous development to parents may be helpful. Sometimes families have unreasonable expectations of a very bright child because one area of the child's growth is so far ahead of other children's. Reassure families that it would be most unusual for a child to excel in all areas of development. A variety of formal evaluation tools are available. These are one-on-one -on -one tests conducted by a trained tester, often a psychologist, who asks the child to perform certain tasks such as putting together a wooden puzzle or answer a series of questions. Two of the most commonly administered early childhood evaluation tools are the Wechsler tests and the Kaufman assessment battery. The final scores for both the Wechsler tests and the Kaufman tests are nationally normed, which means their scores are in the form of percentages that indicate how the child performed compared to other children the same age who also took the test. For example, a verbal comprehension score of 
means that the child is in the top 5% of children across the nation in the ability to comprehend verbally. Meeting the needs of all students requires an array of instructional strategies and classroom practices. Challenging exceptionally bright children in pre-K classrooms adds an additional factor to consider when planning lessons. Let's explore classroom practices for the early reader, advanced mathematician, and young scientist. For many young children with an exceptional talent for language and literacy, learning to read is a natural, fluid process that happens even before formal reading instruction begins. Books often become their best friends. Advanced young readers who learn to read spontaneously and easily are at risk of becoming bored and frustrated in a general pre-K classroom. For these children, the teacher's role is not so much to teach specific skills through direct instruction as, as it is to enhance and nurture the children's love of reading by helping them find books that will continue to challenge and entertain them. The classroom environment is the first place to look when thinking about how to differentiate language and literacy experiences for children at different levels of ability and interest. A literacy-rich environment offers children easy access to books and materials that interest them, and this is especially important for exceptionally bright children because it allows them to make free choices about how and what to read and write. Young children who are able to decode text and read independently need support and assistance from parents and teachers to find reading material that will challenge them and continue to expand their skills as readers and learners. Many children's books have been evaluated for reading level. For children who are reading at a level far beyond their chronological age and are driven by their passion for books or a particular topic, reading levels correlations may not have much relevance. Books labeled for beginning readers in kindergarten and first grade may seem like a logical choice for pre-k children who are reading early, but these easy readers may actually be too easy because they are often written especially for children who are struggling to decode words. Exceptionally bright children have already cracked the code. A useful strategy for determining if the reading level of a specific book is right for a child is the five finger rule. Have the child choose a page in the middle of the book and read one page, preferably one that seems to have an average amount of text compared with other pages of the book. Have the child make a fist when she starts reading, when she comes to a word that she doesn't know. She should put up one finger. If she finds another, she puts up a second finger, and so on. If the child gets to the end of the page and hasn't raised any fingers, the book may be too easy for her. If she's raised two or three fingers, the book probably offers the ideal level of reading challenge, but if she's raised all five fingers, the book's likely to be too challenging. For children who are advanced readers, the key to selecting an appropriate book is often the book's subject rather than its reading level. A book on a fascinating subject with appealing illustrations may be a good fit for a particular child regardless of the level of the text. Keep in mind that even though young children with advanced reading skills may have the ability to read quite advanced books, that does not necessarily mean those books are choices for them. Many books that might technically be at the level of an exceptionally bright early reader are beyond a child's maturity level in terms of the subject and content. Even after children learn to read with fluency, they still enjoy and benefit from reading picture books. They may enjoy more complex picture books, such as the beautifully illustrated books by Chris Van Allsburg, author of Jumanji, or wordless picture books such as David Weisner's Flotsam, or Barbara Lehman's The Red Book. Exceptionally bright young children often develop a passionate interest in a specific topic and will enjoy exploring books on that topic even if they are not able to read all the text. One frequently recommended option for nonfiction books are those by DK Publishing. 
the DK Eyewitness series includes books on a variety of nonfiction topics that include vivid and detailed photographs. Children who are able to read independently with some fluency might be interested in short chapter books. Some recommended chapter books include the Magic Treehouse series by Mary Pope Osborne and the Junie B. Jones series by Barbara Park. Child-friendly comic books and graphic novels, joke books, and silly books are especially good choices for advanced but reluctant readers. The Owly and Baby Mouse series, as well as Mo Willems' Elephant and Piggy series, are a few ideas. Challenging children with advanced mathematical ability requires differentiation. A teacher's first thought may be to think only about how to accelerate students' math skills to a higher level. For example, teachers are accustomed to developing activities and games that teach children to count up to 10 using one-to-one -one correspondence. So it's natural to extend that and teach a child to count to 20 or even 50. The exceptionally bright children will progress through these activities fairly quickly. How can a teacher maintain that pace for the rest of the school year? Another way to differentiate to meet the needs of exceptionally bright children is to increase the complexity and depth of the curriculum in everyday activities. In our counting example, a teacher might introduce more complex counting methods, such as skip counting by twos, fives, or tens. This increase in complexity and depth, instead of accelerating the content, will deepen students' foundations of math understanding, which will help them be better prepared to advance their math skills and knowledge in the primary grades. Geometry is especially exciting for young mathematicians because the principles of geometry can be so easily explored through play. Many exceptionally bright children are ready to name and develop these geometric concepts. Children who are ready to think more deeply about shapes can also think about the proportions, meaning the relationships between shapes of different sizes. Rulers and other measuring tools can be used in combination with blocks to help children do this. For example, encourage children to document what they see and do with blocks through drawings and tracings. Eventually, some children may be able to make their own scale drawings. In geometry, coordinates are used to find locations on a grid. Children can be introduced to the concept of a grid by drawing or building with blocks on graph paper or on a grid of lines made with masking tape. Geoboards and games like Battleship are other ways to acquaint young mathematicians with the coordinate system used in geometry. Conversation is an important way to challenge children to develop mathematical thinking and explain their problem-solving process. Getting students to articulate their problem-solving process is often one of the primary goals in a gifted educational classroom. This is also a worthy goal for an early childhood classroom where all the children are still early in the process of developing language. Children gain mathematical knowledge, skills, and ideas through conversations and interactions with both adults and other children. These social connections allow children with very advanced mathematical abilities to gain new insights and help them understand math in the context of their everyday lives. Engaging students in everyday activities, such as figuring out how to double a recipe while cooking, counting money, and estimating the time it will take for everyone to have a turn using the classroom tricycles are some examples. Another strategy for challenging exceptionally bright children with new math concepts and ideas is to use storybooks as a launching point for math conversations and math activities. Stories related to math content can be read and discussed in groups or one-on-one. -on -one. Children who are exceptionally bright in the area of science are likely very observant, carefully watching all kinds of phenomena in the natural world. Some other personality traits you might see in children with an exceptional talent for science 
include playfulness, risk-taking, originality, persistence, and independence. Regardless of what scientific topic captures children's interests, teachers will be best equipped to challenge exceptionally bright children if they structure their science-related curriculum using the scientific method. The scientific method follows a sequence like this. Ask a question. Do preliminary research on the question. Construct a hypothesis, which is a possible explanation as to how or why something occurs. Conduct an experiment or make intentional observations that test the hypothesis to show if it is right or wrong. Analyze the data and draw a conclusion. Communicate the results by presenting your findings to others. What might the scientific method look like in a pre-K classroom? On the playground, a child asks, why doesn't the grass grow on the sidewalk? The teacher could respond, because the cement doesn't have the same nutrients as soil. Instead, the teacher uses the question as a starting point for scientific exploration and replies, that's a good question, let's find out. With the teacher's support and facilitation, the child conducts some research by thinking about what she already knows about seeds, sidewalks, and so on. She learns that plants need soil, water, and sunshine to grow, and that many plants grow in the garden soil that is dark brown, moist, and soft. Now that the child has gathered some information, the teacher invites her to come up with her own idea that might answer the original question. After explaining what a hypothesis is, he asks the child, what's your hypothesis for why the grass does not grow on the sidewalk? She replies, because the sidewalk is hard. The ground has to be soft to grow things. The teacher helps the child come up with a plan for testing the hypothesis. By this time, many other children in the classroom have become interested in the process and want to be part of the experiment. The children fill two pots, one with soil and one with a few chunks of hard cement. They sprinkle grass seeds across the top of each filled pot and set them on a sunny windowsill. Each morning, they water the pots and draw pictures and take photos of what they see in each pot. On the seventh day, the grass seeds in the soil begin to sprout. The teacher invites the children to study the data they have collected and draw a conclusion. He asks, do you think your hypothesis was right? Does grass need something soft to grow? The children decide the answer is probably yes, and the hypothesis is likely to be correct. The teacher helps the children create a mural that demonstrates the entire process, from the question and initial research, to the hypothesis, to the experiment, to the conclusion. Parents are invited to view the mural. The teacher helps the children create a mural that demonstrates the entire process from the question and initial research to the hypothesis to the experiment to the conclusion. Parents are invited to view the mural. The teacher follows up by asking the question, what other questions do you have that we haven't answered yet? One of the children asks, what makes the sidewalk so hard? This question will lead to further explorations and discovery. Using the scientific method is one way to engage students in inquiry-based learning, which is a learning process that is driven by children's questions. It is not about the need to teach children predetermined concepts or facts. Using children's questions to drive the curriculum, whether by adopting the scientific process or by using other curriculum structures results in a rich, participatory learning experience that is especially beneficial to exceptionally bright children. Teachers should be open to developing a special role for a child who has exceptional interest, knowledge, or ability in a specific subject area or topic. 
Often, the exceptionally bright child will be the one to initiate a project and light the fire that gets the rest of the class going. When a classroom project is sparked by the special interest of one child, that child can be given the role of lead investigator. One of the important lessons we can teach children is the value of making mistakes. Exceptionally bright children, who may already have become accustomed to always getting the right answer in school, benefit from working with teachers who embrace mistakes as a sign of creative exploration. As a pre-K teacher, you are in the position of being among the first educators parents encounter in their child's life. You may be the first one parents come to when they begin wondering if their child is unusually bright or academically gifted. While the parents may be feeling pride and excitement in discovering their child's unusual abilities and strengths, they often have deep concerns about their child's future. Many parents of exceptionally bright children are beginning to wonder whether a traditional school setting can meet the needs of their child. For these parents, listening to their concerns is always a valuable first step. Answer their questions about what you are seeing in the classroom and provide them with specific examples. Parents of exceptionally bright children may be worried that their child won't be challenged in your classroom. They may say this to you directly, or they may imply it in their expressions of concern about their child's future. Explain how you are differentiating the curriculum, engaging their child in challenging conversations, and connecting their child with other children in learning relationships. If parents ask for more information than you can provide, or seem stuck on what to do next, a suggestion for screening or evaluation may be appropriate. Parents can also be referred to online resources, such as the website for the National Association for Gifted Children, listed at the end of this video. A developmental evaluation may provide helpful information, especially if a child seems to have significantly asynchronous development, meaning they are advanced in one area but delayed in another. Parents may also need to hear your reminders that children grow and develop very rapidly in the early years and that testing in early childhoods is not a sure predictor of future development or achievement. Parents of children who are exceptionally bright may be concerned when their child seems anxious or displays perfectionism. Again, reassure parents that these characteristics are often seen in exceptionally bright children and support the family in their efforts to provide balance and set limits. When an exceptionally bright child is a loner, either because she has trouble making friends or because she prefers to play by herself, it's often the parents who are more concerned than the child. One of the main reasons families enroll their children in pre-K is for socialization. Be sure to involve parents in your plans to facilitate friendships between their child and other children. Seek their advice and suggestions and keep them closely informed of their child's progress. We hope that you've enjoyed this Best Practices Teacher Tips video on challenging exceptionally bright children in pre-K classrooms. If you would like to learn more, keep watching for a list of web-based and print resources.